Thursday, March 23rd, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So the president of China, Xi Jinping, has just announced the new Bretton Woods, in my opinion. And yes, there's a lot going on in, in the banking sector, but this is uh, pretty historic, I would say. So that's what we're going to look at today. Before we do, <laughs> just an update on Rudy. There he is. We've been for a walk. And yes, he's uh, growing <laughs> uh, by leaps and bounds. He's behaving a lot better now. And uh, let's see if he behaves uh, as I put him down so we can keep going with this report. There you go, Rudy. So just before I start on the new Bretton Woods, and that's my opinion, is speculation. Just wanted to talk a little bit about the petrodollar. And for those of you who don't know, I've been covering this, the petrodollar, for the last five, maybe even six years. I have a petrodollar files uh, playlist. It's got 39 videos. This is probably going to be in there. And uh, some of my uh, most watched videos are about, about the petrodollar. And five years ago, I said China delivers knockout blow to petrodollar part one. There's a part two. There's uh, from five years ago, the BRICS protocol is set to challenge the petrodollar. And a lot of people, after I made those videos, said, well, nothing's happening to the dollar. And I said, this is a long term uh, thing <laughs> that the petrodollar is like a super tanker. Things don't change overnight. It's not a dinghy. It, it has been in place for a very long time. And the dollar itself has been the major reserve currency even longer since 1944. So just to give you a brief summary of what the petrodollar is, we have to start back at Bretton Woods. And Bretton Woods was organized during the war, during World War II. I think they started organizing it in 1942. The conference itself was in the summer of 44 in New Hampshire, Mount Washington Hotel in Bretton Woods. And basically, the U.S. had the most gold reserves by, by the end of the war. And they set up a monetary system where the dollar would be as good as gold, uh, where other countries' currencies of the major allies would be uh, pegged to the dollar, but not to gold, but they would be indirectly connected to gold. So if countries ran surpluses with the United States, they could go and redeem that gold for $35 an ounce. But what happened was that uh, the U.S. kind of abused that privilege and by the early 70s, there was not enough gold for all the dollars that uh, the United States issued, basically to pay for the Vietnam War and things like the uh, Great Society programs uh, that were started by Lyndon Johnson. So President Nixon tore up the Bretton Woods Agreement uh, temporarily, he said, though. So there, there was no more conversion of gold or of dollars for gold at $35 an ounce. A couple of years later in 73, all the currencies started floating against each other because there's no anchor to them. So that's where we get the crazy foreign exchange market that shouldn't really be something that is something really. It's like having a foreign or an exchange market for the inch and the centimeter and that changes every day the relationship it's crazy it's like having markets to trade uh, the value of the pound to to the kilo and so forth it's uh, it's just a mad market and I think that's one of the markets that's gonna probably be uh, greatly affected by what's coming so with the uh, tearing up of the Bretton Woods agreement uh, the Americans had to find another way to uh, keep demand for dollars because they want to keep issuing the dollars. So they they did a deal with the Saudis that the Saudis would only sell their oil for dollars and they take those dollars and buy treasuries and recycle it. 
and that's the petrodollar. But uh, we've seen, I think, uh, since 2008, that the Chinese especially were not very happy with this setup. And why? Well, because I think they held a lot of mortgage-backed securities back during the 08 crisis. And if it wasn't for the bailouts, uh, their reserves would have been wiped out. And I think the, uh, the Russians uh, were aware of that as well. So they've, they've been working um, at this for a very long time, ever since the 08 crisis, I think. That's the way I see it. And uh, in my videos here in the petrodollars dollar fires, you will see why I talk about knockout blow. Uh, China and Russia, they've started building the infrastructure for being able to, to have their own uh, system. Yeah, they started a few, quite a few years ago. W one of the things they've done, for example, in uh, Shanghai, they've opened a, a gold exchange physical gold exchange, they've opened a commodities exchange. Uh, the, the Russians, for example, they've opened a central bank office in Beijing and so forth. So all the infrastructure uh, is there, the payment structure as well. Uh, the Russians have created one, the Chinese as well. And uh, the uh, incidents or the war in the Ukraine and also the uh, sanctions that America has been putting not only on uh, Russia, but also on Chinese uh, nationals. That has, has accelerated this process of trying to get away from uh, the petrodollar or the dollar, if you want to go back to 1944, as the major reserve currency. And uh, I think one of the biggest signals that we'd see something big this year was how much gold <laughs> all these countries that were trying to move away or be less dependent on the dollar. Um, the fact that they bought the most gold since that Bretton Woods agreement last year, a massive amount of gold their central banks bought. And, and we've seen this year it, it, it started uh, at the same pace. And even the Chinese now they're announcing every month how much gold they're buying. And why is gold so important? Well, because I think uh, this new Bretton Woods that she just maybe inadvertently announced yesterday, or maybe he did want the world to hear it. And here's the uh, clip of it before I, I go further. So yeah, I, I, I'm not sure what kind of system it will be, uh, but uh, I'm sure they've, well, I think they've learned from what the Bretton Woods system did. It gave uh, one country a lot of power. And I think, uh, funnily enough, I don't think Russia and China want to be top dog. You might think you're crazy. No, I, I think they just want to, uh, to be equals to other countries. They've said that. Of course, they're going to be powerful, especially China with the second biggest economy. So I, the way I think this system is going to work is that uh, countries are going to have gold. Every country is going to have gold and uh, they're going to trade. It's probably going to be heavily uh, dependent. Uh, this trade is going to be done a lot in the yuan, but it's going to be done in other currencies like uh, the Saudi real, the rubo, and uh, the Ru Indian rupee, the Brazilian real. It, all countries are going to use their own currencies, but there's going to be uh, probably at the end of the year, for example, if uh, a country has a surplus with another country, they'll just uh, say, oh, here's your, your currency. I'll have the gold, please. That's the way I think it's going to be. And why do I think it's gold? 
Well, because going back thousands of years, gold has been the anchor for for money. And uh, I don't think um, China wants the yuan to be like the dollar was after uh, Bretton Woods or even during after, you know, during the petrodollar era. They don't want to have that exorbitant privilege because they've seen what it's done to the to the U.S. It's been used to uh, in debt the country massively because the exorbitant privilege, as a French finance minister said back in the, I think it was in the 60s, and I think it was Giscard d'Estaing who became president eventually, is to be able to print uh, currency out of thin air and buy anything you want from the rest of the world. And I think uh, this new Bretton Woods, whatever it's going to be called, or the new BRICS monetary system, uh, it's going to be based more on real goods. And yes, <laughs> the money is necessary to do trade and the currencies as well. But they're just like a, a means to an end. <laughs> uh, the dollars become the, uh, the, the end right now. And... Uh, America has not only abused its uh, exorbitant privilege, but it's using it as a political weapon instead of an economic utili utility, really, for, for the world. And uh, I think that's what's happening. Am I saying that uh, I want to have these uh, BRICS currencies that uh, you should move to China, Russia, or anywhere? No, I'm just saying what's happening here. Uh, all it's going to do for Americans and also us in the West. And, and we're seeing it already. <laughs> and, and I highly recommend a, a movie from 1981 called Rollover with Chris Christopherson and Jane Fonda. And it's all about what's happening now, actually. And what does rollover mean? Well, it's when your creditor doesn't, <laughs> when your loan comes due, let's say, you keep uh, rolling the loan over, right? And it comes due and your creditor says, I don't want to roll over. I want to cash in. And, and I think this is what the BRICS are, are going to do in the next few years. They're going to cash in. And all the, the mayhem we're seeing in the markets, in the banking sector, it's all related to this. And uh, all it will mean is that our currencies are going to become worth less. And... Uh, Yes, if there is a meltdown of the fiat currencies, they will suffer as well, the BRICS countries. But I, I think they will be better prepared to get out of it. And I even think that uh, we need to look at it in another way. Uh, a lot of people think China and Russia and the BRICS are doing this to usurp the U.S.'s power. But what if they're doing this because they know the dollar and the Western system's doomed, so they have to prepare for it? That could be it as well. Um, yeah, I, I know there's going to be a lot of people who disagree, and I'm not going to go into the politics, the CCP or, or Russia or anything. I'm just looking at it in a geopolitical and economic uh, sense to make you understand what's going on. So what this will mean is everything is going to be more expensive for us in the West and we're fine. We're seeing that already and we're going to have to earn our way in the world. We won't be able to keep running record trade deficits like the US just did. I think over a trillion a year. The UK as well has been running trade deficits for uh, as far as the eye, uh, eyes can see, right? So that's why things happening. Yeah, I think it's historic. And it's interesting that uh, that uh, chat while uh, Xi Jinping was leaving, I think that was the Kremlin, uh, was on uh, Skull and Bones Day. Some of you have noted that uh, March uh, 22nd, 322. So there you go, a message to, to the Skull and bone, Bones people from, from China and Russia. Who knows if they're aware of that. Anyway, uh, just wanted to let you know, we're going to look at the markets now. And uh, after that, I'm going to do some of the questions from last week as well. So if you want to listen to the questions, and I'm going to try to answer them as best as possible. So uh, it's 8.11 a.m. Uh, London time. 
So we've got spot gold at 1977. It's up about seven dollars. High's been 84 and the low has been 1964. We've got spot silver down 11 cents, 22.86. Low's been 74. The high 23.11. Uh, the Dow future has rebounded overnight. Yes, I saw comments that uh, Yellen said that this uh, guarantee for all deposits and that's off. Yeah, that's that's not on anymore. So another thing to worry about there in terms of uh, the system. Uh, as for the Fed, I think uh, Powell said that uh, they thought about pausing because of the situation in the banking system. Uh, but uh, they saw that uh, Yellen and the Treasury were thinking of backing a lot of stuff, so they didn't. So this is a, a little bit of a mix-up, maybe, between the two. Who knows? Anyway, the Dow future is up 183 points, or up just over half a percent. NASDAQ 100 future is up 1%, 127 points. And the S&P is up three quarters of a percent at 39.64. Uh, to the currencies and today we have the Bank of England meeting. Uh, I think they will raise by 25 basis points. Uh, we'll have to see. And I noticed that overnight I got a message from my bank uh, app. They've raised the uh, savings rate uh, from 0.65 to 1%, which is still really low when uh, inflation or prices are rising in double digits still losing like 10 percent there uh, the euro is up uh about half a percent at 10902 so the euro doing quite well uh, the dollar is down half a percent versus the yen at 130.89 uh, the dollar is down two-thirds of a percent versus the u1 at 682.03 to the other currencies uh Aussie dollar is up three quarters of a percent, 67.35. The uh, dollar is down half a percent versus the Canadian uh, dollar, 136.72. And the Kiwi dollar is up one percent at uh, 62.86. Uh, platinum to the general commodities. <laughs> platinum up, up five bucks at 9.92. Uh, we've got WTI crude. Uh, that is, let's see here, excuse me, that's down half a percent at 7040. Uh, Brent crude is down half a percent as well at 76. High grade copper is up three quarters of a percent, holding above that four level at, at around 407. Quickly check uh, the bond market. Uh, U.S. Treasury market. So we've got the uh, two-year yield is back below 4%. It's at 3.92. The 10-year is uh, down four basis points, and it's now back below 3.50 at 3.46. What does that mean? Well, I, I think the market uh, suspects the Fed might raise rates again once more, but uh, that could change. Uh, uh, I think they said uh, they might raise rates depending on what happens. So <laughs> anything can happen very quickly these days. So it, it's not set in stone. So with that, let's look at some of the questions from last week. I already did the, the first three. So we've got quite a few here to go over still. Let's do four, five, and six today. We might do a little more depending on how quickly I get through them. Uh, how much cash do banks keep in their vaults? That was the video I did. Uh, this is from Red Wine. I wonder if you would comment on the UK budget and how uh, will it affect people like you, especially independent investors? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing uh, really new, I, I would say. In this uh, latest budget, I think the big uh, announcements were last year in the autumn budget. And uh, yes, I think they've lowered capital gains uh, tax threshold from this April from 12,000 12, 
300 pounds or 600 pounds to 6,000 from April. And the next year, they're going to lower it to 3,000. Uh, to be honest, I haven't really looked too much into this latest budget. And uh, I've seen that they've done a lot for uh, pen people who have big pensions. But to be honest, I, I just wish budgets were really small, that they didn't have the government that is in the Treasury didn't have such a, an important uh, voice on what we do. And, and uh, yeah, that, that's what I have to say about the uh, budget. I hope it helps. Uh, this is how much this is from the same video. How much cash do banks keep in their vaults? This is from Totti Mitchell. I mentioned to a friend who used to work at Goldman Sachs about the value of owning gold. His response was to remind me of what FDR did when he confiscated gold. Can this happen again? Anything's possible. Uh, when FDR confiscated gold, gold was money. A lot of people held gold. And uh, the reason he did that is because people, there was a bank run when he took over in March of 33, and he even instituted a bank holiday for a week, which meant you couldn't go to the bank to get your gold out. So I, I think it was related to that, but anything's possible there. But there is a way to circumvent uh, the uh, Confiscation Act, and that's through owning collectible uh, coins. And if you want to find out more about that, go to the description of this video and uh, get in contact with ITM Trading because that's what they specialize in, collectible coins. Uh, they are exempt from confiscation, but as I said, anything's possible. Uh, and even if FDR did confiscate the gold, I think he only got like a quarter of all the gold that Americans held. Uh, question six uh, from the video, Credit Suisse is just the tip of the iceberg. This is from uh, Jay-Z or Jay-Z. Thank you, Mario. How do you think First Republic will do? Will they survive? Well, I noticed uh, First Republic didn't do very well yesterday. Uh, and it's now, let's see. Uh, I've got it up on my system. It's trading at $13. Uh, it, it dropped uh, like 30% or so yesterday. I, I know that the, the big Wall Street banks injected $30 billion into First Republic. But uh, I don't think it's out of the woods. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, I have a feeling they'll have to, another bank will take over them, just like SVB UK was taken over by HSBC, just like Bear Stearns took over, was taken over, sorry, in 2008 by JP Morgan. Maybe JP Morgan will take over uh, First Republic, who knows? Um, so we're going to stop right here at question six. We've still got some more, which we'll do tomorrow and uh, maybe Saturday as well. So with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.